This is Johnny from Extra Boxing, and I'm gonna do a recap and post analysis on the Earl Spence and Terence Crawford fight. So as you guys know, I picked Crawford easily because he just has too many things going for him, and Spence is a little basic in comparison. And I picked Crawford to win by knockout in the ninth round, and lo and behold, it actually happened exactly the round. I don't usually call the round, but I felt it would be around those rounds. Um, when I watched the fight again, uh, I saw different, I saw like uh, out of the ring angles, and I also saw like other angles. And I'll tell you what I saw. Uh, first thing that comes to mind is the wide stance. Spence has a very wide stance, and Crawford stands a little higher up, a little straighter, a little narrower. Um, I like having the legs closer together because you're more swift. You can change easily, you can, you can pivot easily, you can move around easily. It's just easier. You, you move better, you have better footwork when your legs are a little closer, right? A lot of fighters, especially beginners, they put their legs super spread out wide because they feel like it gives them more power to sit down and crank and swing big punches. It also makes them feel like they can duck under punches a little easier. But the reality is when your legs are farther apart, everything is harder to do. Even just to stand still, right? Just to stand. When your legs are farther out, it takes more energy just to stand. And then when you do the pendulum step, when you start bouncing up and down or back and forth, it uses more leg energy when your legs are further apart. Why? Because your legs are spread out farther apart. So they... They can't help each other. They can't support each other, right? If I'm doing push-ups with my hands here, okay, it's going to be different than if I have my hands all the way out. So same idea. It's just more work. Um, another thing too, I noticed that Spence was lower. He's a little shorter because he spread his legs out. So Crawford was able to attack him from the top and then like, so over the top and then straight at the same head level and then under, right? under at him. So, so Crawford was kind of arcing shots over the top, straight in, around, and under. Whereas Spence, because he was low, all of his punches either come straight or like a little bit to the body. But basically all of his punches were kind of coming from the same place and a little easy to predict, right? There was times when he would like jab and then he would like commit his, all his body, all his head, his foot and everything. And it was kind of obvious to see. Um, Obviously, I mean, he's a world champion, so he's, he's, he's beat a whole lot of people with it. But against Crawford, it didn't work. Um, Crawford saw it coming every time. The body language, I really didn't like Spence's body language early on. Just little things like the way he moves his head would like sometimes get caught under Crawford's arm, right? Or sometimes Crawford would miss and then he would just push Spence's head down so that he couldn't counter, right? There was a lot of that. Uh, other things Spence did... I could see that he didn't have a single counter punch for Crawford, really. Like, all he could do was just kind of throw and throw and pray that something gets in. There was no setup. There was never, like, he takes one of Crawford's punches, like, I mean, by take, I mean, he, like, slips and then comes back with the counter or pulls away and comes back or rolls under and throws. He was just kind of, like, get close and throw a bunch of punches. Get close and throw a bunch of punches. That's not going to work. That didn't help. Crawford, he had really sharp counters. You can see he's the faster guy. He's more reflexes, has a little bit more setups, which is easier because Spence is a little predictable. But the other thing that Crawford did too, I noticed at the end of the exchanges, Crawford would like kind of wait half a second and then bah, pop a hard jab, right? So he's blocking, he's blocking, maybe they're exchanging and then he waits and then bah. He had that like off timing jab at the end of many of his combos that like caught Spence completely off guard. I really like that. Spence, I felt he needed a few more overhands to get the job done. Um, and he was all right, honestly. His, his body, I, I saw his hooks to the body. The way Crawford was taking them was just, it was just so obvious. They could kind of see it coming. Um, any other things that I felt? I mean, Crawford is just, is just too good, you know? Um, also, for me, his legs look a little bigger. His calves look bigger. So he was standing very, very solid. Um, and I like that he kind of, he has a little bit more snap and he has a little bit more pop. And there are times when he swings and he commits his whole body, but there are also many times when he just kept his body still and just fired the arm. Bah! 
right? And it really caught Spence off, jo uh, off guard. Whereas a lot of times when Spence swings, he swings his whole body. You can see it coming. Other than that, um, a lot of the clinch work on the inside, Cr uh, Crawford had both his feet under him, so he was a little stronger. He could out-wrestle Spence on the inside. Spence had his feet, feet far out. And of course, the back leg is way far out in the back that it can't help him wrestle on the inside. So what I would do if I was Spence, bring the feet in a little closer, start, start working there, bring the feet a little closer. Also to um, Crawford had a lot of different head angle positions, right? So he had head inside, uh, head forward, head back, then he had head, you know, this diagonal, that diagonal. Crawford was kind of just back here most of the time. And then when he wants to throw body shots, he leans, he leans in like this. It's super obvious. It's super obvious. When he goes back, he wants head shots. When he goes here, he wants body shots. It's, that's what I saw. Um, any other things that I thought Spence could have done? I think for sure, like with his jab, sometimes he like fires a little bit, like he kind of, he's like pushing his jab through. So he needs to just snap the jab. But here's the thing, like he's like a strong thud puncher. He's not a snap puncher and Crawford's a snap puncher. Um, other than that, I did see, you know, Crawford was easily paring down Spence's shots or just tucking away like this. Um, Spence, uh, sometimes he, a lot of times he was like covering up, like completely covering up. Uh, other times he was just ducking, like, com like hiding, not, he wasn't even ducking. He was just hiding down there. So, but at the end of the day, it's easy to say this when one guy is just clearly superior, superior in athleticism, in skill, in strategy. Um, but I thought Spence did a good job, actually. He was really strong, like, man, he absorbed a lot of punishment and actually still fired back with respectable shots. He wasn't, like, fully gassed out. Um, so I like that. And he also landed, he landed, a, a, in round three, he landed, like, a pinpoint perfect <laughs> overhand left right to Crawford's jaw. And Crawford just went, you know. So I thought Spence did good. I mean, he really did good. He, he's, he's championship level caliber. It's not a hype. It's not a fraud. He's a real champion. He beat a lot of champions. Just so happens that Crawford's that much better. Where they go from here, I don't know. I don't think Spence should rematch Crawford. I don't think, at best, he does better. That's it. And he makes it to the 12th, you know, the, the, the last round. But I, I don't think he, he'll beat Crawford. No way. It, 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 where they are in age, where they are in skills, it's just too much of a gap, right? Uh, for Spence to catch up, he would have to try new strategies, new style, new things. And that's going to hurt his ability for the next two years, which, you know, he's a, an older fighter now. That's It's not the time to be trying new stuff. Just my opinion. Um, if Crawford fights the Charlos, the, the smaller Charlo, I think Crawford wins. Um, I'm not even sure there's a 154-pounder that's good enough to beat Crawford. They might be big enough, but are they good enough? I don't know. I'm John from Mexico Boxing. I hope you guys like this post analysis. Uh, if you want to see more, you know, leave some comments, leave some feedback below, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.